She-Hulk Attorney at Law has taken the whole world by storm. Not only is Jennifer Walters a great Hulk, but she's also a kick-ass lawyer. Her clients have ranged from the cool, easygoing Wong to the very comic and problematic hero, Leapfrog. Let's rank Miss Walters' clients from worst to the best. First at number 10, we have Runa, She-Hulk's worst client. Runa was a difficult client for any attorney because she's constantly broke the law to provoke her adversaries and the judge. Runa's shape-shifting antics earned her full marks for comedic character development, but she kept acting badly and ended up in jail for pretending to be a judge. Runa's lawyer did a decent job at first defending her innocence, still she started making excuses, like saying she was granted diplomatic immunity by Asgard, even though she wasn't even there. Although she has a strong Asgardian connection as one of the original Valkyries from the time of Odin's father, Bor, Runa in the comics isn't an elf at all. Like her she Hulk counterpart Runa, an older light elf, she originally appeared in King in Black Return of the Valkyries, number one in January 2021, making her a newcomer to Marvel Comics. The warrior's terrible backstory involves millions of years spent within an undead celestial as she tries to guide the spirit of her dead lover, Alta, across the realm between and into the afterlife. Jane Foster, a Valkyrie on the hunt for the Sentry's soul, comes to her rescue. Secondly, we have Dennis Bukowski as at the number nine spot. Dennis has acted like a stereotype, making derogatory comments about Jen and other females and acting inappropriately. Since Dennis's toxic attitude continued to offend even male lawyers like Pug, he was a bad client. To protect himself from what he thought was the actual Megan V. Stallion, Dennis hired Pug to file a lawsuit against Runa for impersonating his fiance. When Pug demonstrated Dennis's naivete, Dennis was vindicated. Dennis was a horrible client and his lawyers were glad to see the back of him because he was rude and didn't want to work with them. The two had a contentious relationship during their respective legal careers. When he got one over on Walters, he would brag about it and show a bit of cruel streak, which made him a real pain to be around. Now for someone, we all hate it. At number eight, Titania. As Jen was so much better than Titania, Titania hated her for the moment she saw her. She filed suit against Jen for the She-Hulk trademark rights out of spite, making her an unreliable plaintiff. Titania was not the best client since she blamed her lawyer for a case that didn't have much merit. Even if she agreed with her lawyer's approach to undermining Jen, Titania didn't act serious about the case because she was too busy taking selfies and thinking about herself. Titania's introduction in She-Hulk is sloppy, which wouldn't be a problem if the character didn't seem to play such a pivotal role in the show. She was a high-level villain in the comics, but she's there for comedic relief in this series. Coming up at number seven, we have Megan the Stallion. Marvel has made it common for superheroes to show up in their shows, but in the third episode of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, megastar rapper Megan Thee Stallion plays herself. Tatiana Maslany's Jennifer Walters, aka She-Hulk, appears at a time when he is suing an Asgardian shapeshifter for damages after she purported to be his fiance and hustled him out of nearly $200,000. After the credits roll, the real rapper shows up in court, hires She-Hulk as her attorney, and the two dance it out. Attractive by Jen's positive demeanor, she signed on as a client, and the two twerked in Jen's office. Let's look at Leapfrog at number six. Only those who have read the She-Hulk comics knew who Leapfrog was before he made his live-action debut. The protagonist was a terrible client and an even worse customer. He wanted to sue his tailor, but neglected to mention to Jen that he had ignored his tailor's specific instructions. This led to an embarrassing incident in court for She-Hulk, but we can't be too angry, that's how she she met the suave lawyer Matt Murdock. The first appearance of the croaky villain was in issue 25 of Daredevil, published in 1966. Leapfrog wasn't the worst client on Jen's roster, as he didn't give her quite as much of a headache as others. Leapfrog relied heavily on his costume and inventions to fulfill his criminal goals. However, he was never taken seriously as a threat because of his lack of sophisticated weaponry. Instead, his main ability was his frog-like movements, made possible by the power-pack-fueled coils 
Patilio had created. As a result, he was always an awkward opponent, but never a truly threatening one. Up next at number five, we have Luke Jacobson. In the fifth episode of She-Hulk, we get a glimpse into the fashion challenges faced by a lady who can, at will, grow two feet tall and pack several hundred pounds of muscle. Fortunately, Jen's best friend and paralegal worked out a solution and located the elusive fashion designer, Luke Jacobson, who specialized in creating combat gear for superheroes. However, after some persuasion, he accepts the challenge of designing Jen's new transition wardrobe. Let's be clear, transition doesn't mean change from summer to fall or day to night, but rather change from Jen to She-Hulk. Luke's been a bit of a jerk with his frank mannerisms, but he had the right idea when he insisted on the innocence when Jen brought charges against him. Luke couldn't keep quiet the whole time, but he was respectful enough to let Matt Murdock, his counsel, do his job. Luke did well to keep his anger toward Jen under control and avoid sabotaging the situation by criticizing her more than he needed to. Luke's victory is mostly responsible for Matt's efficiency rather than Luke's efforts, hence the attorney deserves most of the credit for the win. What's more, we have the disgraced magician Donnie Blaze at number four. Donnie Blaze's quirky personality wasn't enough to prevent him from using magic in court, demonstrating his cunning. After showing off his skills, Blaze convinced the judge that he needed money to stay alive. Blaze wasn't the best client because he had a professional demeanor, blatantly flipping off Wong in court and acting out of line by doing magic while not being instructed to do so. Still, kudos to him for being in step with his lawyer, who acted in a manner not dissimilar to that of Blaze. There is a Donnie Blaze for every Jonathan Pangborn in the MCU, someone who uses their immense power irresponsibly. Wong realizes his error, and he goes to Jennifer Walters for help. Donnie's missteps in She-Hulk Attorney at Law are large largely played for laughs because the show is a comedy. Not even the tiny bat dog things were killed at that moment. Despite she best Hulk's efforts, but the idea of low level magic users out there is scary, especially given what consumers have seen of sorceress pranks in MCU movies and WandaVision. Following that, at number three, we have Mr. Immortal. One of She Best Hulk's running jokes had the titular character using Mr. Immortal's fake deaths as an exit strategy from his marriages. Even though Mr. Immortal was Mallory Book's customer, he surprised everyone with how competent he was. Mr. Immortal did whatever he was ordered to do. Even though it brought him much disgrace from his ex-wives, Mr. Immortal was challenged because he refused to accept that he had done anything wrong. Ultimately, though, he did as his lawyer and her amazing assistant advised, and the issue was settled out of court. Not to mention everyone's favorite Sorcerer Supreme, Mr. Wong at number two. Because of his sympathetic relationship with Madison, Wong is one of the most endearing heroes of the MCU's fourth phase despite his initial irritation with her. Wong posed minimal challenges for Jen. Other than a lack of familiarity with American law, Jen was able to use his relationship with Madison to prosecute Donnie Blaze successfully. Wong was one of the few people who didn't doubt or minimize Jen's ability outside of the context of their relationship as client and consultant. The chemistry between him and Jen was so good that they settled their dispute with Donnie Blaze out of court while preserving a working relationship that could come in handy in the future. Finally, at the top spot, we have Emil Blonsky, aka The Abomination. Many of the humorous moments in She-Hulk may have traced back to Emil Blonsky, particularly his increasingly zen demeanor. Although Blonsky's cage match with Wong almost derailed Jen's defense on his behalf, he managed to turn things around brilliantly. Because he took Jen's counsel and apologized for his actions, and because he showed he could control his changes, Blonsky won the lawsuit. Jen's role as his lawyer was respected from the start. Blonsky often apologized to Jen for his rude words, and the two of them worked together to change how people had thought of him for decades. That's a wrap for this video. Do you want to know more about She-Hulk, Jen Walters, and her numerous clients? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.